Tom Campbell here. If you find something of significant value in our videos, please consider supporting their production through our Patreon account or through a one-time donation. The links are in the description below. Thank you and enjoy the video. Let's get started. To begin with, I'm going to give you a brief overview of accessing point consciousness, what point consciousness is, and then we'll have to take a break. And after that, we'll talk about uh, communicating with other IUOCs and with the larger conscious system. And then we'll, of course, we'll open that up to, to Q&A before the break and after the break. All right, first, what is point consciousness? And this is just going to be a very fast run through, just to kind of prod your memory. And if you are one that didn't watch this, then it'll give you a little bit of an idea of what it is we're talking about. Point consciousness is where you let go of the data stream that defines physical reality. Okay, so you are in a virtual reality. You're receiving data, information from the larger conscious system, and it's, you interpret that information to be this physical reality. Okay, that's kind of the theory behind it. The theory will not be necessary for this, for this course, uh, but I'll tell you that anyway, just because it'll help make it all consistent. So when you let go of that data stream, that means you stop processing sense data. Your consciousness stops processing sense data. When, it, when you do that, you find yourself in this space I call point consciousness. Because without sense data, there's, you don't have any data to describe your seeing, your hearing, your feeling, your tasting, your touching. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't feel any of these things. It just means that you stop processing it. And what I mean by that, you may, if you move your attention to it, you can still feel yourself sitting up in a chair, lying down in a bed, uh, you know, physically there, but only if you put your attention to it. When your attention is not on that, then that stuff disappears. So if the phone rings or a horn honks, you will still hear it. It'll probably break through because that's kind of a signal that breaks through. But if you don't process it, it'll go away. And if it continues to ring, you just let it go. You're not connected to it thinking, oh, I wonder who that is. That's attaching to it. That's not letting it go. Letting it go means you don't process it, so it disappears from you. All right, so that's what, uh, that's what that is about. That's what uh, point consciousness is, and it isn't terribly difficult to get to. We get to it lots of times. You get into point consciousness when you're daydreaming, and you're completely consumed by that daydream. You get into point consciousness when you read a book and you're so consumed with that book, you're just not thinking about the world around you. You forget about the fact that you're sitting down or standing up or the people are walking around or that there's traffic outside in the streets. You just stop processing all of that. But still, if a phone rings or a horn honks, you'll hear it, but then you'll just let it go and go right back to your story. Of course, with reading the book, you are processing what's in the book. You're processing book material. When we get to point consciousness, we're processing nothing else. So you end up being a point of consciousness floating in a void. That's why it's called point consciousness. So point consciousness is not that hard. Many of us get real close to point consciousness, you know, even in our daily work when we're sitting there trying to solve a problem. We're sitting there trying to, you know, to focus on a particular problem that we're involved in. And while we're doing that, all the rest of the world kind of falls away. So it's a thing that's natural for us when we focus. It's natural for us when we let go of the outside world. So the one thing that you'll be focusing on is that you exist. 
That's all. You're conscious and you exist. That's your focus. Everything else drops away. All right, so that's supposedly you practiced this. You tried to achieve it. You tried going in and out. The, the other thing that we do on that first day is talk about kind of getting up close and personal with the larger consciousness system. Now, that can be an experience that takes several forms. One of those forms is, is that you, you meld with the larger conscious system, lose your identity completely, and feel one with everything. Not just with the system, but one with everything. Rocks and stones and animals and leaves on trees, everything without any particular identity, and you feel love. Everything is perfect. You feel surrounded in love and love, but as well, you love everything outside of you as well. So it's this, this, this state of unconditional love where you are one. Now, that's one way to get in touch with the larger conscious system, is to just to get to know what its life is like. What, is, what does it see? You know, what's its perspective on things. Well, that's its perspective. That's the way it sees the world. And you get to meld with that and experience what it's like to be love. And you can have this experience when you're ready, like everything else in this, this line of work, when you're ready, that experience will come to you, particularly if you ask for it. If you say, you know, larger conscious system, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to feel how you feel. I'd like to connect with you. And then you just open yourself to that and let it happen. And it probably will happen if you have by now learned through your practice with the TMI tape or otherwise, you will learn to let go of your intellect and stop judging and stop analyzing. So the problem will be when you say, all right, larger conscious system, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to see love. I'd like to feel what it's like to be love. And it, if the instant after that pass that comes off your lips, you're thinking, oh, I wonder if it's going to happen. I wonder if I'm going to get that experience or not. And okay, let, let me wait. Is this it? No, it's not it yet. What about now? Anything happening? No, not yet. You know, if, that's your intellect chattering away. So if you can tell, get that intellect to sit down and be quiet and not be perched on the edge of its chair, you know, waiting for some big thing to happen, then the big thing can happen. But as long as that intellect is sit there, sitting there, you know, looking for, waiting for, anticipating the big event, then the big event probably won't happen. You need to just open up and be and let things happen. You can't pursue them. You can't make them happen. You just have to let them happen as they do. So once you get to the point that you can just open and let be, then you have a pretty high probability of having that experience. So, the other thing about the larger consciousness system is that you will progress in this work much more quickly if you have a good working relationship with the larger consciousness system. And the way you go about that is by being serious. Okay, by being, uh, <laughs> I say being serious, I don't mean not having fun. You should laugh and have fun while you do this. But I mean, you're serious about growing up. You're not just playing at it, but you really do want to change. You know, you have some, some of your energy dedicated to changing. That's important for you. Uh, you have to be sincere. Okay, you have to be trying, experimenting, working at it. This is not a spectator sport. It's not like you sit back and wait for enlightenment to come to you. That won't happen. You have to go do, you have to be, you have to interact. And you learn from those choices that you make when you're doing and when you're interacting. And if you're proactive in this learning, then 
you will create a good working relationship with the larger consciousness system. And from the system's point of view, you will be a person of interest. Yeah, that has terrible overtimes if we're talking about the police or the court system. You don't want to be a person of interest there. But here, with the larger conscious system, you do want to be a person of interest because persons of interest are helped. They're given synchronicities. They're given nudges. They're helped. So all you have to do is be sincere in your effort and be proactive in your effort. Not just say, okay, I'm here, I'm ready, do it to me. You know, well, that's your, that's your ego talking. You need to get into the being level. That's also your intellect. It's not an intellectual experience. This is an experience that's more at the intuitive level than the intellectual level. Okay, so it's, a, it's, a, it's an experience of being, not an experience of thinking. All right, well, with that kind of introduction, didn't take too long, uh, we'll open it up to the questions because that's what this is all about. It's about your questions, not about me lecturing. So I think I've given you a quick overview and you can ask more questions if you have you know, some theoretical questions about why things work the way they do or why they don't work the way they should or something. That's fine, we can ask questions about that too. So let's open it up early for your questions. All right, we'll start with Susan. Uh, hi, Tom, Donna, Keith, everybody. I don't remember this term, uh, person of interest. Is it, <laughs> is it in the text, quote unquote? That's uh, number one and number two, or should I ask number two now, or? Uh... No, just one at a time. Okay. Give, give an old man a chance, you know, to, to uh, keep up with you. Um, Question one, now, it's just, you know, whenever I do one of these courses, I make it up as I go. I don't have a, a, I don't have a script that I follow. If I did, that would be boring. You know, you'd sit there and listen to me read. So I make it up and I choose different words to express myself at different times because those are just the words that come to me at that time. And I hope that as time goes on, it actually gets better and better as I get more and more experience. But a person of interest just means the larger conscious system knows you are trying to grow up. You're trying to learn, and therefore, it makes an effort to help you. Whereas if the larger conscious system knows that you really couldn't care less about growing up, you don't even know what growing up means. You have no idea that growing up is even something you ought to be doing. Then the larger conscious system is not necessarily going to be whispering in your ear, uh, giving you synchronicities or whatever, unless it thinks you're just on the cusp of something that you could get interested and you could get, you know, interested in it. And then it might try to help you. But if it knows you're working on it, it will try to help you. So it's just a new way of, of saying that we get the help if we're serious seekers. Okay. Uh, question two. Um, the definition of growing up. I mean, that's seems like a term that we should understand already, but uh, <laughs> I, yes. I, I, I really, it, it always kind of stops me. Um, okay. So, and I have to say, I didn't finish your book. I'm sorry. Uh, but in any case, I don't, I don't know if you define it there, but I just yeah. uh, wanted to ask you for a little. Yeah. Growing up is a term that I have a lot of synonyms that all say the same thing. And growing up is one of them. Uh, it's a very general term. Um, evolving the quality of your consciousness is another one. Lowering the entropy of your consciousness is another one. Becoming love is yet another one. Letting go of fear, ego, and belief is another one. All of those basically mean the same thing. They all are going to the same place. So depending on the conversation, I may use one or the other, but growing up is kind of a summary on all of those. That's evolving, becoming more, reducing the entropy of your consciousness, becoming love, letting go of fear. And because ego and belief are a part of the fear, letting go of fear means letting go of ego and belief. So that's what I mean by growing up. 
Okay, but if one expression is more uh, sort of annoying than the other, <laughs> would that would that be sort of a portal? I mean, would that suggest that you have something to 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 work with there? Probably, probably. Okay. If there's something that was particularly annoying, like growing up, because it insinuates that you're not grown up when you say you sh you should grow up. And if that bothers you, then that's obviously just tweaked your ego that doesn't like to be, you know, doesn't like to hear that you're not so grown up. So, yes, that's probably something to, uh, to work on. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Stephen, please go ahead. Hi, Tom. Hi, everyone else. Um, I don't really know how to ask this question, but, but how, um, how do you know if you're in point consciousness? Because sometimes I feel I'm, I'm like in a really deep meditation and things, things sort of fall away and that feels really good. Um, sometimes I'm in a, like a really quiet place. Um, sometimes I, I feel like I'm like in, uh, I can see space, like um, I can see stars off in the distance and stuff like that. But sometimes I also just feel as if I'm, still in the same room and and i don't know things are still happening around me yet i feel as if i'm you know i'm not really overly thinking too much and i'm not sure if if they're all just very different levels of of the same thing or or if some are i don't know some are and some aren't point consciousness or or i'm not sure yeah well some are and some aren't i think um if you are just kind of thinking about you're aware of the room and you, you know, you, you're thinking about where you are and there you are sitting on a chair or lying in a bed or whatever it is. And, oh, there's the, there's the sounds. I hear the binaural beat. Yeah, I can even hear the beat frequency. That's all in intellectual space. That's assessing, judging, you know, being aware of, analyzing. That's, that tends to not be point consciousness. Now, if you are in point consciousness and you, things come and go in your vision, well, that's not so bad. That, that happens. That's not necessarily uh, what I call point consciousness, but it's close enough. If you just see stars, particularly if it's daytime and you're lying in your bed in a room and you see a night sky, well, that's okay. Just look at it and enjoy it. Don't try to assess it. As soon as you say, oh, that's a night sky. Oh, where's the Big Dipper? Uh, or why am I seeing a night sky? You know, it's still white out. It's still, you know, light outside. And if any of those thoughts come to you where you start to operate on it, then that's not good. But if it's just there and you let it be there and you don't operate on it, then it doesn't matter. And you'll notice that when it doesn't matter, it won't stay there very long. It'll change. It'll be one thing or another thing, but it won't change. So, I mean, it will change. It'll just, uh, it'll just go from one to another or it'll just go away altogether. And you'll realize that that night sky was a metaphor to you for the great beyond. And you kind of feel yourself exploring the great beyond in inner space. And that's why you get the picture of the stars in a night sky because the metaphor connects with you, you see. But so let those things be, don't process them. Uh, basically, you know you're in point consciousness when you, you're, you're there and you can use your intent or your intent, your mind to say, well, what am I aware of? Just ask that question, what am I aware of? And just be open. Don't start thinking of things that you might be aware of that's counterproductive. Just open your mind. What are you aware of? And if the answer is, well, I'm aware that I exist. I'm aware that I can think. And that's about all. Well, then you're in point consciousness. But if you also say, well, I'm aware that I'm in my room, in my bedroom, lying down, and, and uh, you know, I can hear the traffic outside, and I do all these kinds of things, well, then you need to let it go. And if when you let it go, it kind of disappears, then good. Now you're in point consciousness. But if when you let it go, it's still there. Well, now you're not in point consciousness. If you let it go and it doesn't slowly disappear, 
It might not disappear in an instant, but if it doesn't slowly disappear over the next 10 or 20 seconds, then you're giving too much attention to it. Take your attention away from it. And one of the ways you can take your attention away from it is to busy your mind with some busy work. In other words, you give your mind something to do that is non-functional, something that you cannot operate on. And that's, for instance, a mantra or mantra, however you prefer. And that's all a mantra is. It's a sound that has no definition, doesn't mean anything in particular, and it fills your head full of something that there's nothing you can do with it. It's inoperable. So what it does is because your head's full of the sound, then the head doesn't think about other things like, I'm in my room there, I hear the traffic. It lets all that go because it's just hearing the sound. That's something to focus on, like you focus on the book or focus on a problem at work. It gives you a, a thing to focus on, which makes it easier for you to let go of the outside world. So that would be one way. Sometimes people focus on their breathing because breathing is something that does, is done automatically. It's something you don't have to operate. And it's boring. It's just like the mantra. You want something that's basically non-functional, non-operative, boring. So a good mantra would not be ham sandwich because that might make you hungry. That might make you think about uh, lunch yesterday or the day before that. You see, it would, it's connected to something. You can operate on it. You want things that are non-operable. So any kind of sound, any sort of thing that's non-operable, even a color would be non-operable. You could always see green or you can make something up that works for you. I give some mantras samples in my book in the first chapter. And if you haven't, if you don't have that, you can always look it up on Google Books. It's free there. It, uh, you, can, you can find that out. So that would answer, I think, your second question is you have to be able to open yourself up without getting into your intellect, inside your intuition, and say, what am I experiencing? And the correct answer would be, Nothing except I'm experiencing, experiencing. I'm consciousness, I'm aware, but not aware of anything in particular. If, these, if it's a problem doing that, then you probably need to spend some time meditating. That's the whole point of meditation is to get rid of the noise, to get rid of the thoughts that are constantly running through your head. So if, if that is where you're stumped, then you might want to spend the, you know, three or four months meditating, say, twice a day for a half an hour each time, just letting thoughts go. That's the whole point of this meditation is just to let the thoughts go. And when a thought comes up, you don't struggle with it. You don't get angry with yourself. You just very gently push it aside and let it go. Go back to your mantra or your color green or whatever you're going to fill your head with. It's not operative. And then when another thought comes through, oh, you notice it and you just set it aside and go on. It has to be done gently. You can't push it. You can't force it. So does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. It does. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Shirley, you're next. I have to unmute my... Um, so my question is, so when I'm sitting here listening to you and there's nothing else going on in my head, does that mean I mean point consciousness? Sure. Okay. Sure, if you're sitting here, well, not exactly. Almost. You're real close to point consciousness, except you're listening to me. Yeah. And you're, hit, you're, I'm filling your head with, with my voice. Point consciousness would be where you're sitting there in the quiet with your eyes shut and you get nothing. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah take, so, so take away my voice. To, yeah, take away yeah. my voice and that would be point consciousness. Yeah, so when I'm listening to, I'm just listening to, I'm not thinking, you know, oh, why did Tom say that? Right. You know, what do you mean, blah, blah, blah. If I'm not doing all that, I'm just listening to your voice. Right. Then, okay. That's, that's being, yeah, that's point consciousness. In a sense, you've let go of all your physical surroundings. You're not really aware of the fact you're sitting in a room or even that you're in a chair or anything else. You're just there being. 
Okay, now you see, you see a screen, you hear the voice, but everything else is kind of gone. Well, if you let the screen go and the voice go, then you're home. That's it. That's point consciousness. You're just sitting, being. See, it's a, it's a thing of being, not a thing of doing. So this whole point of point consciousness is to get in a state of being, to get out of the state of doing, to get out of the state of intellect, judging, analyzing, assessing, comparing. All those things are intellect. So you want to get out of that space into the space of being, which is where your intuition is. You have to get into a state of being in order to be intuitive. That's when you get your intuitive messages, when, you, when you've let go of the physical world. Yep. Cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, George, you're next. Now, I'm sure that's not how you pronounce your name, but you can let me know how you pronounce uh, it, all right? That's okay. I mean, it, it's Jorge, but I know it's hard to pronounce okay. for some people, so I got George it. is okay. Okay. Yeah, thanks. My, my question, uh, it was pretty much the same question that Stephen asked about, Stephen asked about how to um, kind of like, how to know when you're there, but it's more about, um, I, I can't tell sometimes if, if, uh, if what I'm seeing, the images uh, that, I, that, that I'm seeing or hearing stuff, it's, if, it's, um, if it's noise or if it's uh, something else, if, I, if I'm connecting to the LCS or if I'm, uh, already in point consciousness, like how how can I tell uh, the transition? Sometimes it's very like I, I feel it's like straight away, like I'm in, I'm I'm already there, and sometimes I think now that that's um, that's noise, that's uh, that's me thinking uh, like, like things that I've done through the day and stuff like that. Yes, then you start thinking about not thinking. Yeah, yeah, and then that's that's a problem. Uh, just let it be. Don't try to make that decision. Don't try to judge that. See, that's back to judging, and that's intellectual. So if you see things, you get images, you get things, just let them be. Oh, that's interesting. Huh, you know, just let it, let it go. And you might look at it and say, hmm, I wonder what that's a metaphor for. You can do those kinds of things. Mm. But don't analyze it. Oh, Am I seeing a part of the larger reality or am I just making that up? That's a problem that gets you back into your intellect again. So I'd say, don't try to judge it. Just let it be however it is. You can engage it. You can connect with it if you like. If you, make, if you do that engaging and connecting, now you're, you've gone beyond the point consciousness. You're, you know, we engage and connect after we get the point consciousness. But if you've only been in point consciousness for, you know, three seconds and then things start happening, well, that's all right. You're in the right spot. You can, you can then in, engage things. See, what is that all about? Become it. Go to it. Have conversations with it, but don't judge it. Just let it be however it is. And if nothing turns, you know, if it just doesn't turn out to be anything, then it doesn't turn out to be anything. But if one thing leads to another... You start with something and then you kind of engage that and it turns into something else and you engage that and it turns into something else. Well, just go with it. See where it takes you. It's a trail. Mm -hmm. Follow that trail. See where it might take you. But don't ask the question, what is this? Where is it coming from? You know, why am I getting this? All of that is not helpful. After you've had lots and lots of experience, those questions will have answers. But in the beginning, those questions don't have answers. So there's no point in answering. You don't have enough experience to develop an answer for it yet. Mm. And it takes years before you start developing answers that you have some kind of confidence in. You know, it takes a lot of experience. So in the meantime, just go with it. The thing to th ask isn't how real it is or why am I seeing this? Although, why am I seeing this isn't so bad. That basically is a connection with it. What does it mean? Does it mean anything? And you might look at it and you can say, eh, I didn't get any particular meaning. It's just a pretty picture or it's just an ugly picture, whatever, and let it go. Now, 
when we do other things other than just go to point consciousness, you will want to connect with things. You'll want to engage with things. And then I'll tell you, engage with everything. Become it, connect to it, go with it. Engage in it some way or another. And uh, because this is, you have to learn from experience, from doing, <laughs> doing without doing, right? You have to learn from your interaction, not, you know, in your interaction in intuitive space, not your interaction in intellectual space. So there we interact, and that's good. But just getting to point conscious, just ignore those things and let them be however they are. Then when you decide you want to do something, like interact with that thing you saw, well, then just go do it and then engage it. But if it's not, you're not yet to the point of wanting to engage anything, then just don't get attached to anything. Let it all just slide by. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Stephanie. Tom, you spoke of being proactive with the LCS. Is this something that you'll talk about more in the, um, this, this MBT add-on? Uh, well, I can talk a little bit more about it right now if you- That would uh, be wonderful. Yeah, if you have a question. Uh, what, what kinds of ways, other than maybe sending healing out, could one be proactive well, with the LCS? Making an effort to evolve. No, I'll say grow up. Making an effort to grow up. Making an effort to let go of the fears that you have. To see that you do have fears and let go of them. If you're trying, if you're working on it, if you want to know more, if you want to understand reality from firsthand experience, you know, how things work. Um, healing is one of those things. You know, if you want to be able to be better at healing, to be more effective at diagnosis, all those things are things that make you a person of interest to the LCS. Those are things you're somebody who's trying to change, trying to make yourself more love-based and less fear-based. And that will bring attention to yourself to the, from the larger conscious system. The system, you know, we are, the, we are one of the system's strategies for its own evolution. We are part of that system. As we evolve, it evolves. So it has a you know, it has an incentive to help us evolve. That's part of its own, that's part of the system's evolution. We're part of that system. So it has an incentive to work with us. It wants us to succeed, but we have to do it with direction from our own free will. It can't tell us answers. It's not going to, you know, force us or push us to do things or to grow up. We have to reach out and take that opportunity and use it. And if we're out there trying to do this, then the system will be helpful. And you will end up with a good relationship with that system. And now you'll start getting some guidance. You'll start getting some help. And that makes the job of growing up easier. Does that help? Uh, yeah, I was just kind of curious and ways of being proactive and what, you know, what things that you enjoy doing to be proactive with the system. Yep. Well, let's just take a basic one, getting rid of your fear. That would be proactive. That's the key problem. So get, getting rid of your fear is the number one thing that you can do because that's on your path to growing up. So you'd say, well, how do I get rid of my fear? Well, first, I look at myself and look at my emotions. Okay, in the last week, have I ever felt anything that was negative, like stress, um, annoyance, anger, um, been upset, didn't feel I was appreciated, got angry, you know, all of those things are negative, And they're all attached to a fear. 
So anybody who has negative feelings, and that are all the feelings that aren't joy, peace, um, uh, what should we say, satisfaction, those are the positive things, positive emotions, positive feelings, the kind of the feelings that make you smile, make you happy. The things that don't make you happy and don't make you smile, the ones that tend to make you frown a little bit, those are the things that are negative. And every one of your negative feelings is attached to a fear. If you didn't have a, that fear, you would not have that negative feeling. So you start digging. What is the fear that creates that anger, that upset, that annoyance, that impatience? What is it? And you can probably find that. And then you have to start working, getting rid of it. So you think, well, next time I feel that coming on, next time I start to get angry, I'm going to stop myself. And I'm going to say, oh, I don't want to be that way. And it's not, don't say I don't want to act that way, because it's not about acting. We're not all trying to become better actors. It's I don't want to be that way. And that's what you're doing. And if, if you are serious and, and uh, you know, authentic in your pursuing getting rid of fears, then the system will help you, will want to work with you. So that would be one way. That would be the most direct way, I'd say, that you could be a person of interest is if you're really working on getting rid of your fears. Because that is the fundamental thing you have to do to evolve the quality of your consciousness is get rid of those fears, that ego, and those beliefs. So that's number one. Anytime you feel any sort of negative emotion, you should stop yourself because, and realize that I choose to feel that way. I have free will. It's my choice. Okay. You know, George said something, you know, rude to me and that made me angry. So George made me angry. No, George said something rude. That's George's issue. But you choose to get angry because you have a fear. You have ego. You have beliefs. And that thing that George said just triggered your own problems, which is why you got angry. So then you have to try to find what that is and get rid of it. The way you get rid of it is to really have a strong intention to get rid of it. Because if you do have that strong, sincere intention to get rid of it, you'll do all the right things to get rid of it automatically. So these are, these are the things. It's not, a, it's not a bunch of set acts like healing people. Healing people's nice. But you can heal people for all sorts of reasons. You can heal people because it makes you feel more important, more significant, more powerful. And all of that's ego stuff. So it's not just actions that you do. It's basic things like getting rid of your fear, caring about people, being kind, not acting kind, but being kind being nice, being helpful. What can I do? You know, ask that question. Well, how can I help? Not what's in it for me? Why should I bother? You see, so it's a whole bunch of little things like that, that reflect you're serious about becoming love. And that are the things that you can do. So it's not so much a doing thing as it is a being thing. All of this work that we're, we're going to talk about is going to be work in the intuitive side, not in the intellectual side. The intellectual side takes care of all the doing. The uh, intuitive side works at a more subtle level of being. Tom Campbell here. I and MBT Events hope you liked this video. We now have well over a thousand hours of free video on this user-friendly, ad-free YouTube channel. Though these videos are free to our viewers, they represent many thousands of hours in production and editing, and many thousands of dollars invested in video and audio equipment, along with the required computers and software to store and process the raw video into finished products. So far, all of this content has been funded directly out of our own pockets. Be assured, we will always continue to do what we can it's our life, our purpose, a labor of love that we will continue to pursue as best we can. However, those pockets are not as deep as they used to be. Thus, we are now seeking to augment our resources 
with support from our viewers. If you find something of significant value in our videos, please consider supporting their production through our newly created Patreon account or through a one-time donation. The links are in the description below. Thank you.